that's a good question. I mean, we occasionally have kids coming in for regularly scheduled drug tests, and we, we're not foolish. I mean, we do take a look and make sure that what we're getting is actually urine. Um, occasionally, we'll have apple juice that shows up as, as urine. Uh, there's, there's lots of um, words out there that there are certain things that will clean the system or will clean up a specimen. But most of the time, what we find is that patients are just trying to submit somebody else's urine or because it, it, it's not clear to me that the cleaning agents really do that good a job. Okay. And as I said, marijuana is a very long-acting metabolite. Apropos to what you said, though, about, about employers, what, what's very interesting, too, is that sometimes high school and college students will go to uh, Facebook and talk about their weekend and how totally trashed they were and then are shocked when school officials, athletic directors, parents get to read uh, what's on Facebook or, or other of the socially net networking sites and it's like the internet has all the anonymity of a postcard mm -hmm. so I, I think people have got to be thoughtful too if they are using uh, talking about it and talking about it in a way that you're portraying the drug use alcohol use as positive is probably not a good thing not only for the individual but for your long-term prospects and the teenagers and young college kids today don't recognize that employers are actually you know taking time out to look on the social network to say, hey, you know, Larry Curtis, is he on the social network, be it Facebook, Twitter, whatever the situation might be out there. And you've been out there, as you've just said, hey, I got blitzed this weekend. What a great time, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a valid point from that bad, perspective. Bad career yeah. move. Yeah, bad, very bad career move. <clears throat> um, in relationship to, obviously, smoke in the joint, is, does marijuana cause lung cancer? Is that something, you know, to be aware of? The, the thing that's always challenging to discuss in this situation is the world of genetics. You know, e each of us has our own individual genetic uh, predisposition, let's call it. And certain people are prone to certain kinds of medical conditions. There are some people who have never smoked a cigarette a day in their lives and develop lung cancer. There are other people who smoke four packs a day for 60 years and and die from something else. I'm not, by the way, I'm not endorsing no. <laughs> four packs a day for 60 years. What I'm suggesting is that there are individual genetic predispositions that okay. individuals mm -hmm. have. And in general, what we do know is that marijuana is a complicated substance. I mean, it probably has 100 different active chemicals in addition to the irritant effect of smoke itself. So I, I guess the question is, is it possible that inhaling um, smoke in general is not in our lungs' best mm -hmm. interest? I, I can go back to eighth grade health, and I, I remember seeing a a movie in eighth grade health where they blew some cigarette smoke across the villi in the lungs, you know, the little pseudopods. That, mm -hmm. And the little, little arms go phew when you do that. They just sort of tip right over. So we know smoke in general is not good for you. Um, so let's just say that inhaling smoke in general from a pulmonary point of view is not a good idea. Okay. What about the aspect of legalizing marijuana for medical purposes? Is there a true medical opportunity here with this particular drug? You know, when you think of all the pharmaceuticals that are out there that people take, you know, is there a real yeah. well, honest road? Th there, know, there are some medical it. uses for metabolites of marijuana. I mean, they apparently do have a positive effect in terms of the nausea that comes about from chemotherapy with okay. cancer patients. And so that's out there. And there, there's an investigational drug from Britain that, that theoretically is an appetite stimulant for people with, with cancer. The father of American medicine, William Osler, in 1905 suggested that marijuana was the drug of choice for migraine, but realistically there wasn't a whole lot else available for migraine in 1905, <laughs> and so I guess anything would be helpful. I, I think the, the problem is, is that because of this controversy around marijuana, marijuana use, it, it sort of has curtailed medical investigations for the, the potential use of this particular medication. And again, as I, as I said before, a lot of our medications that we use in allopathic medicine are, are derived from, from um, pharmaceutical agents, from plants and things like that. So, I mean, long story short is there may be some medical uses, but they're, they're sort of limited. Are there any real side effects of withdrawal from marijuana? Well, I mean, I think there are going to be side effects from withdrawal from anything. I mean, my morning cup of coffee is not an addiction but it's a habituation. And if I don't have my morning cup of coffee on a daily basis, I sometimes get a headache. Um, 
Is it full-blown withdrawal like you would see with opiates or heroin? The answer is no. But your body eventually sort of gets used to certain kinds of chemical substances. And there's no question that people who are large marijuana users on a regular basis will feel the effects of not, not using it. And um, the problem with this discussion, though, is that sometimes it's not that clean, clear cut or clean cut simply because other people may be using other medications, other drugs in mm -hmm. addition to the marijuana. But the answer is yeah. I mean, anytime you've grown used to something, habituated to something, you can suffer symptoms that could be defined as withdrawal. We've got maybe a minute or so left here right now. And one of the questions that you always hear out there is that, you know, from the parent's perspective, that marijuana is the gateway drug to all these other drugs out there. What has been your experience from working with the young teenage uh, children out there? Yeah, I, I think that's controversial, whether or not it is a gateway drug, but I, I believe it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I believe sometimes, if, if you accept my premise that people who are using it are, are self-medicating, sometimes that self-medication is not enough. So if one thing was somewhat helpful in their mind, they're gonna try something else. And I think potentially it is that interaction between multiple drugs, the, the use of several different substances, which at the end of the day, um, from a physiologic point of view, get us all into trouble. Absolutely. Um, if you had a message to say to the parents, or even more importantly, maybe even the, the young teenagers out there in relationship to marijuana in general, what would that message be? You know, more or less. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's what I said before. Had, had we all known we were going to live this long, we would have taken better care of ourselves. And that's true in terms of substance use, that's true for nutrition, that's true for exercise, that's true for everything we do. It's hard to envision getting older, you know, especially if you're 15, 16, 17, 18, but it does happen and it happens really, really quickly. So I, I guess what you have to emphasize to parents is if, if we're not exactly sure what the long-term effects of something are gonna be. Let's be circumspect about whether or not we wanna expose ourselves. It's sort of the discussion we have with some parents who'll say, I don't think cigarette smoking is that big a deal. Well, does it help? Mm -hmm. Does it help you long-term? If the answer is no, why do it? Dr. Rapper, one of the questions that is frequently asked um, around from the, the parents is that, what are the uh, effects that smoking marijuana can have physically on the, the body of the, the young kids today. Um, you know, there are potentially stories <clears> of, <throat> um, you know, the, the male having some form of uh, enlargement in the breast area. I mean, is that, you know, a, a symptom or, or what is that? What, oh, what do you see happening? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, marijuana can affect a variety of body systems. I think we've touched on the effect it has on, on brain and concentration, memory and learning. We, we've touched a little bit on the effects that it can have on the lung, simply because it is an inhaled substance that can cause irritation uh, to the lung, can cause a variety of chronic respiratory illness. I, I think though when we're counseling uh, boys, the thing that seems to get the biggest response out of them are the, the effects it can have uh, both on breast development and testicular size in males. And um, it's interesting that marijuana, amongst its other effects or side effects, can actually inhibit estrogen metabolism. and um, estrogen, from a physiological point of view, is the immediate step above testosterone. Estrogen, we think of as the, the female hormone testosterone for, for males. But we all have a little bit of estrogen. I, I think that's what makes us males kinder, gentler folks. And when you enter puberty, sometimes the, the, uh, the voice cracking effect that you see is an estrogen effect. Mm -hmm. um, testosterone obviously has more of an impact in terms of hair development, hair growth. If you think about you know, hair under the arms, hair in the genital area, that's a testosterone effect. But marijuana does in fact slow down the metabolism of that little bit of estrogen that males have. And so what you actually see is a term called gynecomastia, where males come in with some breast development. And um, a little bit of a, a breast nodule is a common thing that we see at the beginning of puberty. But if a boy comes in to our office with something about the size of a B cup, we uh, suggest that they ought to cut back on their marijuana use. And they look at us like we're witches, but, like, how did you know yeah, that? You? And it's because it's a physiologic effect. And that seems to have more of an influence sometimes in maybe saying, maybe I need to, I need to cut back cut a little back bit. Or, yeah. Yeah. Because we can talk about long-term effects, we can talk about concentrated memory, but there's something about having breast development that, that bothers the guys. The other thing that is true, though, is because it inhibits you know, testosterone, um, it does tend to shrink the testes. And there's some pretty good scientific literature that says that the testes become smaller under the effects of marijuana. And again, um, you talk to boys about 
decrease in testicular size, that always does seem to get a rise out of them. Well, thank you, Dr. Rappo, for being with us again this afternoon. And uh, we hope everybody here uh, has enjoyed the information we've been able to share with you this afternoon. And uh, thanks to Dr. Peter Rappo from Pediatric Associates of Brockton and West Bridgewater. Thank, thank you, you for being here.